10 years ago, I guess, I developed a real passion, I guess, for education. So I was leading the MSc New Imaging at King's as well. So I've tried to angle all my research towards education to have an education element, okay. including to my New Imaging research. Um, so these days, I'm really working on projects which involve some form of brain plasticity and some form to, to do with education. Okay. Uh, so some of the big research projects which, which we are doing now, which is directly linked to what my PhD was on, is on neurofeedback. When we are using the uh, MRI scanner as a tool for therapy, okay. rather than just for imaging, so we're actually using the scanner uh, to hopefully design some new treatment, non-medicated treatment. For example, we're doing a big clinical trial at the moment on ADHD, okay. where we have you know, adolescents in the scanner are playing a video game if you want, you know, with their brain, mm. uh, they have a, 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 a rocketeer on the screen that they have to try to make go as high as possible. So there's no controls, uh, but the controls is brain activity in specific regions. So we're trying to teach them uh, on demand to increase brain activity in this specific region uh, through operant conditioning. So it's like Pavlov's dogs, if you want. Mm. We're teaching them to on demand raise the brain activity compared to some control regions. Uh, and then, you know, the higher this person goes, the, the more points they get, and the more points they get, the more money they get. Of course, they all get the same amount of money, but they, they don't know that. Um, <laughs> and the idea was that they, they can learn to, to increase brain activity on demand, and this hopefully will have some beneficial behavioral uh, impact. So this worked enough as a, as a pilot study, we did on about 30 people, and mm -hmm. I'm now part of a big clinical trial led by my colleague, Professor Katia Rubia, uh, evaluating this on hundreds of children uh, doing you know properly involving sham and everything okay. so this is one research so we've done neurofeedback at the LPPN on also ADHD but we've done it on psychosis as well so okay. the idea in this case was to if you want to simplify to decrease the volume of your auditory hallucination so to learn on demand right. to just you know switch the volume off when the voice starts starting uh, we've done this on anxiety try to control anxiety. So the idea is when you feel something coming, be it your anxiety or the voices, you can then repeat what you've been doing in the scanner. Okay. So we're evaluating these kind of treatments. So it's all about seeing what's happening in the brain when you learn. And my other big research, which just started, I mean, in the last year, we're doing a big project with the King's Entrepreneurship Institute, trying to understand how entrepreneurs think, and try right. to evaluate if they think differently, how they think differently, and then using this to evaluate and design uh, entrepreneurship training mm. programs.